Well, um, thank you very much, uh, Marilo and uh, Joel, also for for inviting me here. Um, indeed, I come to the water issue uh, through the food security uh, challenge that we are uh, facing right now, which is hit, as you know, by the repercussions of COVID, uh, um, climate, and and the Kremlin, the three Ks, in whichever way you want to say it. Um, and it's it's a it's a pretty serious thing. But let me start with a story. Um, my great grandfather in the village uh, that uh, he was living in actually was the first to create a water plant at village level in uh, my country in Denmark. It's not so long ago. It was in the twenties, nineteen twenties. And it actually created the snowball effect across the villages that every village had to take ownership and develop their water supply. And he was actually so successful that five years later, I think it was in 32, he opened uh, together with his uh, peers in the village, the first public swimming pool, imagine that, in a village. I mean, nobody had ever heard about it. And, it proliferates. My point is that uh, at the local level, you can push things if you take ownership. And this goes for Denmark, but it also goes for Burkina Faso or Senegal or wherever. That puts pressure on the political system. The other point I want to, to, to make is uh, uh, when I traveled uh, to China um, in the mid 90s and 90s, and explained about the European legislation on integrated river basin management. I couldn't believe my eyes because here you have China that has lived with great rivers for ages, but the concept, the concept was alien to them. They hadn't really created a legal framework from the mountains all the way through the plains uh, to Shanghai or whatever. And they were desperate to get the text immediately in Chinese. I had to tell them, sorry, guys, we only have it in the 20 languages of the European Union, but I'll make sure you get a copy. And then they said, OK, could you also please send us 100 uh, engineers, water engineers and experts over uh, and they can come next week. I said, this, <laughs> this is a little bit too much. But my, my point here is that, in fact, you need community action from the bottom, and you need support from those that set the framework. And, and if we can link the bottom with the top, then I think we're onto something very, very important. And obviously, Marie-Law, it has a transboundary uh, element. It's, it's, it's clear, we know it from the European Union, with the Rhine Convention, which actually is very old, but the Ipo also crossing different uh, uh, different uh, 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 regions in Spain and also the Danube. Uh, we have a huge experience in that. And this is right there to be copied as you have done now in, in Senegal. And uh, as we know also from the Manu River uh, collaboration. So from the bottom and the top, these two things have to uh, be linked up. The other point I want to make, and, and we all, it's linked a little bit to what, what uh, my good friend Runa was talking about, solidarity in action and the soft skills. Water is one of the, let's say, of the drivers or, or entry points, but it doesn't, and it will never exist in isolation. It is crucially dependent on what goes on in the other sustainable development goals. And, and the handicap we always have is that we sit, now I'm, I'm at risk of becoming a food security freak. So I look at it in terms of calories, or I look at it in the terms of grain from Ukraine, et cetera. But it's, every issue is linked to other issues, trade systems, uh, allocation of national budgets in the Ministry of Finance, innovation policy, justice, et cetera. And it's very important what Runa said that we have this openness of mind that while we sit on a subject matter, 
we are open and we communicate with the other highly respected experts in the other sectors so that we can create an integrated approach. Because just working on, on water without making sure that the legal system is also responding and the transport system is responding and the health system is responding is not going to lead us very far. And I have to say, uh, many, many years of work have told me that the human being has a tendency to become tribal, to become, let's say, hooked up on our expertise. And we are a little bit handicapped uh, in this crucial need to work horizontally across, across the borders. So um, the more we can, let's say, work locally, act globally, cross-border, the more we can connect across the sustainable development goals, and the more we can mobilize the soft skills that Una was talking about. And I really agree with her. It's very much about leadership at all of these different points. Um, then I, I do believe we stand a chance of making a real difference. Over to you, and thanks for being here.